Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Eli and I'm a third year dental student and this is how I got into dental school with a low GPA. Don't believe me? Here's a screenshot of my undergraduate transcript and my GPA, 2.974. And here's another screenshot of my graduate GPA, the 3.11. And here's a screenshot of my DAT for good measure. Is that convincing enough? All right, so let me tell you how. So since we've had a lot of new faces on the channel recently, I felt the need to make an updated version of this video. This video basically sets the tone for my channel. I made this channel to motivate the pre-dents who feel like they're losing hope, the people that need something to keep them going, because I remember how it felt to think I'd never get into dental school or like I wasn't a strong enough applicant. Before continuing the rest of this video, I must admit that I am not the norm and I understand that. However, everything on this channel is always transparent and therefore I want you guys to know that because I did it, I do believe that other people can do it too. However, just because I did it doesn't mean that everyone can, okay? Cool. So let's start with my background. I started college when I was 17. I attended the University of Maryland College Park for undergrad and I majored in general biology. So while I was an undergrad, I was involved in various things on campus. I won't list out my whole resume to you guys, but some of the notable things were being a part of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, being on the e-board for the Charles Drew Multicultural Pre-Health Society, I also did research in undergrad and I did a summer research program where I did paid research for a stipend and I ended up presenting at a research conference in my senior year. Another notable program that I did in college, the summer after my sophomore year, I did a program called SMDEP, which is now known as CHAPET. When I did this program, I did at the University of Virginia. Again, I was pre-med at the time. But this was also like my first time hearing about like dental school and pre-dentistry, etc. And I remember we actually had a speaker come from Detroit Mercy Dental School. And I remember after she left, half of our class was talking about switching to pre-dent. For most people, it didn't really stay that way. But a notable experience nonetheless. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we continue the video, I want y'all to take a look at this. Y'all see this hoodie that I'm wearing right now? It says, go see your dentist. This hoodie is from GSY Clothing. You could go visit the site at gsyclothing.square.site. I'll put the link in my description as well as on the screen. This brand is just getting started. Started by, I don't know if I'm going to tell y'all who started it yet, but hey, go cop a hoodie. So when I graduated undergrad, I was still pre-med, believe it or not. And I knew I wasn't going to get into medical school with a 2.97 GPA. So I thought, what are some things I can do to get around this? And I started working at NIH after I graduated undergrad as a research assistant in the post back ERTA program. I learned so much while working at the NIH. And although I ultimately decided not to go to medical school, I think that this two-year experience was very valuable to me, my professional development, and overall just getting me focused on where I wanted to be. All right, so towards the end of my time at NIH is when I decided I was going to switch to being pre-dent and that I was going to apply to dental school. We could talk about what made me make this switch, etc., but I have plenty of other videos on that that you could check out. I want to stick to what's important in this video. When I decided I would switch to pre-dent is when I came to the realization that nothing is going to get around bad grades. If you're somebody that's watching this that has a low GPA, you can't just out-volunteer, out-shadow, or out-work, like work experience, a low GPA. You have to do a post back or a master's and show these programs that you're capable of challenging science courses at a higher level. So what I decided to do was to do a post back at George Mason called G squared. The reason I went with this program is because it had proven success for getting students into medical and dental school. And I also knew two people that have done it previously that were both dental students at the time. So as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, I did the post back program and I finished the program with a 3.11 GPA. Granted, when I did this post back program was the same year that COVID hit. So during our second semester, we were forced to switch to online classes. And to be quite honest, I quickly found out that my attention span and online classes 
did not mix well at all. Also, during my post bag program in October of the first semester is when I took the DAT. So I just want to give you guys an accurate timeline of when everything is happening. I switched from pre-med to pre-dent around May 2019. I took the DAT in October 2019. I applied for dental school in May of 2020 or June of 2020. So another thing that was key for me to getting into dental school with a low GPA was a good DAT score. As you all saw, I got 21 academic average on my DAT, which is right around the average for accepted students into dental school. So I figured that this would give me a good shot, even though my GPA was a little low. Now, this next thing I'm about to tell you, I would say maybe one of the most important reasons why I was able to apply to dental school so successfully, and that is using the IDEA Dental School Explorer. This book or this online guide is something that you can purchase from the IDEA website for like $30 or $35. It was key for me applying to dental school. This is a resource that tells you every single dental school's stats for their last class that they accepted, an average GPA, a GPA range, an average DAT, a DAT range for academic average, PAT, and total science. It shows you the demographics of the class, how many minorities were in the last class that they accepted, how many people graduated and came straight from undergrad or got some type of master's or post back certificate or whatever it may be it breaks down all these stats and this guide allowed me to really really analyze the schools that i was thinking about applying to and decide whether to include some or take some away because i simply was too far away from the gpa range or too far out of the dat range or whatever it may be now just like everything else with applying to dental school it costs money like i mentioned the guide was 30 or 35 dollars at the time that i was applying but the way that I rationalized it was it actually took a school off of my list that I was really, really going to apply to. And without this guide, I wouldn't have paid any attention to the fact that psychology was a prereq for this school and I had not completed that class in my undergraduate experience. So in retrospect, I saved around $200 from not applying to that school. So it was worth the little 30 or $35 that I had to pay for this resource. But if you are applying, whether you have a low GPA or not, I greatly recommend this resource as I can attribute my success in applying to dental school to it. Application wise, where did I apply? I have a whole video on all the schools I applied to, so I'm not going to repeat everything. But the schools I received interviews for were Boston University, NYU, VCU, Howard, Meharry, and Tufts. So what was my purpose in making this video? Honestly, number one, since there's so many new subscribers here, I wanted people to get an understanding of who I am, my story, and what led me to dentistry. But also, I wanted people to see how transparent I am on this channel and how my goal overall is really to just increase representation in the dental field, as well as encourage people who may feel like they're not good enough or they're not exactly where they need to be. I feel like it's very often dental students, dental professionals feel like they need to portray themselves as perfect where that's just not the case. And if we stop putting up this front, it may increase the type of people that we attract to our profession. And this will overall lead to better care for a more diverse group of people in the population. If you're one of those pre-dents out there that are thinking about applying to dental school, here's some basic tips that I have for you. Number one, do the best that you absolutely can while you're an undergrad, but remember, grades don't define who you are as a human being. Get involved in some activities in undergrad. Don't think you have to do everything. Better off, pick some things that you really like and get very, very involved in those activities. It's much better that you show your commitment to a few clubs rather than trying to be a part of every single one. Get in the field. Show that you're really committed to going into dentistry. Shadow, volunteer, do things that will expose you to the field of dentistry and eventually you'll be able to write about all these experiences in your personal statement and on your application. And last but not least, just trust the process. The road isn't over until you stop driving. 
the race hasn't been lost until you stop running. It doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how long ago you graduated from undergrad, if your true goal is to become a dentist, keep pushing, keep fighting, and one day you will get there. Anyway, that's all I really had to say for this video. I hope you got some encouragement as well as some information about applying to dental school if you're someone that was in this position as well. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and stick around for some of the vlogs that I put out. And also, if you're about to apply to dental school, be on the lookout for the Student Dr. Eli Pre-Dental Scholarship. That's all I have for y'all, and I thank you for watching. Peace.